And David Beckham's back with a new Netflix documentary. In it, we learn that Beckham was supposedly a once-in-a-generation footballer. Posh and Beckham are described by Gary Neville with a straight face as the Charles and Diana of sport. And, of course, there's lots of moaning about the press, the fans, his various managers. So is it all a load of old golden balls? We're here to decide is the man who brought Beckham to LA Galaxy, Alexi Lalas, and podcaster James Barr. Right, Alexi, hit me with it, then, because I've always found these two a bunch of self-promoting whiners who basically exploit every situation for personal financial gain. Discuss. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the documentary is going to change uh, your opinion of them, but I think it kind of set out to humanize David and Victoria for that matter. And I think in a sense it does. I think it makes them a little bit more likable, whether you're seeing you know, David putter around with his bees and his honey or on barbecue or his OCD when it comes to his clothes. Um, but I also think that there's some misses. So it's, it's, it's entertainment. Um, and I think ultimately you get a glimpse into what David Beckham is, but only the glimpse that he and Victoria and David Beckham, the machine, wants you to get up. Right, so. and James, that's my issue with it, is that this is a very sanitised thing. It's a bit like the Meghan and Harry Netflix one, but all we're getting is basically a PR job. I mean, I love Meghan and Harry, and I think the documentary was pivotal. Uh, however, it was this absolutely documentary... absolutely horrific, but go on. This documentary is... So boring. I mean, Rebecca Luz isn't even named. Which she's is my second cousin, by incredible. the way. Incredible. Really? Yes, there's a bombshell for you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, she's not named, so I imagine she feels this is quite disrespectful. She's yeah. one of the most interesting she's things. She's been dragged about that back story. into it, yeah. Also, David Beckham really betrayed the LGBTQ community when he worked with Qatar. Mm. He last week said that it was actually a safe place for LGBT people, even though people are murdered for being gay there. So it does strike me as a bit shocking that he didn't sort of bring up how part of brand Beckham was built on... Well, he wasn't really ship. challenged about anything substantive. I mean, it, it was interesting to hear them talk. And, you know, I mean, Beckham was a good footballer. But, Alexi, I've always felt that he's overrated in the pantheon of great players. He's a good player, but he was never a great player. Yeah, but he was, you know, arguably and maybe still is one of the most famous people on the planet. And I think that's another thing that the documentary doesn't really delve into is this brand. I think I find it as interesting as the actual player on the field. And to your point, look, we all know a titillating part is the affair and the alleged cheating and all that. And if you're going to bring it up, I don't know, but af after watching it, I turned around and said, wait, that's it? Because they kind of just veered off yeah. into something else and it never actually was addressed. I get yeah. it, it's personal. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But if you're going to talk about it in the documentary, then there's got to be something definitive. Mm. And the intentional vagueness in that moment, I think, was stark and a missed opportunity and one that really stands out. Well, what is Beckham's reputation in America now, would you say? Now, I think with the ownership that he has with Inter Miami and now bringing Messi, I think there's one of business. I think there's one of stardom. I also think that he, in the history of American soccer, his coming to Major League Soccer and to the United States, I do think that it's looked at as a seminal, and rightfully and fairly so, a seminal type of moment that changed the structure and the league. Uh, I don't think that he's looked at in the same way that, for example, Pele, when he came and played in the NSL, right. looked. And to your point about, about the player... Messi has always been about on the field uh, and what yeah. he does on the field. Beckham David has it. been about everything on the field and off the field. And, and James, Victoria Beckham and all this, how does she come over? Do you oh, think? I mean, it's so unrelatable that she had her dad drive her to school in a Rolls Royce. I know. And the fact that she's trying to hide that is hilarious. Listen, I love Victoria Beckham. I've always loved the Spice Girls. I'm a Spice mm. Boy. I also think that's what's upsetting about this documentary. Like, it's more about him. I just mm. don't really care. I want to see Victoria Beckham getting back to what she does best. And what she does best is pointing in the Spice Girls. <laughs> so can we please get a reunion? Yeah, I wouldn't mind a Spice Girls reunion. Uh, I wouldn't mind that, actually. I think it'd be quite fun. Uh, but they couldn't have any auto-tuning. They'd have to actually be heard singing as they actually <laughs> sing. Uh, James, Alexi, good debate. Uh, thank you both. I appreciate Ginger it. Ginger Spice, uh baby. Ginger Spice. <laughs> <laughs>